Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play the Aztecs in our tutorial series. So, uh, while I was in between episodes, I did a little bit of thinking and I'm kind of regretting using all the chops in this city because I could have gone for the uh, wonderful wonder over here called St. Basil's Cathedral um, for the plus one food, plus one production, plus one culture and all tundra tiles. I think I will still make an effort to go for this next so that we can maybe build it in here and get some more value out of this uh, tundra city. Um, but we're going to be severely limited on chops. We do have one, two, three, four chops remaining, five chops remaining. So we will be moving Magnus over here to make advantage of that. Uh, now, some of you have been asking, why do I switch production when I place a district? And it's quite simple. Um, it's just more efficient, right? Um, the, the city's actual production can be put into anything. However, the chopping production can only be put into districts and chopping the production is more efficient than building it. So I would rather build builders, chop out districts and then build something else. So it's kind of, it's just, it's really just comes down to a, uh, an efficiency sort of thing. Okay, we're going to place our industrial zone here. We're gonna delete that, but we are going to get started on some more builders and we'll chop out the builder like so. We have the harbor. We are going to place the, put some production into the industrial zone. It'll take five turns off of it and we'll keep building. Uh, I could purchase a lighthouse here in a turn. We might do that, but we'll continue to build builders. All right, great. The city definitely needs its borders to grow, uh, but I don't want to spend my money yet. We do have a great rider now. That's really, really nice. We will expand that great rider over here and create some great works of riding. We'll also choose our production over here in Sempoala. We're going to grab the water mill for a little bit of growth and production, and that'll be fine. I have a builder here. Let's switch to the harbor. We will insert production to get that closer to being finished and then continue to build the granary. You're going to hang on there. I have a builder over here. We can finally now get these plantations online. I'm not going to harvest the marsh. I'm just going to assume that that will be useful. Um, it would I would get a big chunk of food right now, which would actually force the city to grow. So I think it might be worth it to harvest the marsh here to get the city to grow to a larger population so that we can work more tiles. And then it'll grow to nine in two turns, which is pretty cool. Uh, then we have this builder over here with two build charges. Um, we could start laying down monasteries on these flat desert tiles around here for the Petra city. Let's have a look. What tiles are you working? You're working mostly good tiles right now, so you don't actually need any more improved tiles. You could use some food to help you grow even more, but we don't really have a good farming location in this city. Why don't you just head over this way and see if maybe you can improve something over there. We're going to continue to explore with our ships. And I think it would be worth it to settle just one city over here uh, to get a hold of these pearls because I don't think they exist anywhere else. So I might build a settler in this city. Is there a policy I can get really quickly? No. Okay. You pop up over there. We'll go to the next turn. And we'll continue to explore. Looks like production over here finished on the audience chamber, which is going to make our stuff even better. I could get the anchor what? Um, it's not a bad wonder. It would give me plus one housing and population in all of my cities. It's pretty good. Would I rather build the anchor what or something else? Let's have a look and think. Right. I could build the settler in nine turns. I do need a trader. I'm going to grab the trader and then we'll make a decision about whether or not we go for the anchor. What we will place the plantation at long last. We have the plantation in here and we'll create another great work. You are just going to sit there and wait. We are going to switch the production because again, the builder production can't be put into the granary. So we want to put it into the things that we can. So we finished the lighthouse. We'll grab the granary in here. We are going to 
purchase the lighthouse in here so that we can get another trader. Uh, you are going to put a mine there. That'll give this city even more production. Great. Then we have a five charge builder that we can uh, make sure that we're constantly inserting production into things. While we're building builders. Great. We just finished construction. We are working on military engineering because we want to build the armory. Because what we want to do is, if you're going for a science game, you're going to want to try to get as many of these, um, as many of these boosts as you can. So we need to find time to build archers, and I'll probably do that in my capital city. So that might mean we won't go for the uh, anchor watt. But you go here. We will harvest in the capital as well to force some population growth because we have a lot of tiles that are really good to work in here. So more population growth is good. Then you have completed your mission over here. Um, let's have a think about where you want to go next. I guess there is stone here that I could harvest towards the lighthouse. It would almost finish it. I think I will harvest for the granary and then go straight for the lighthouse and it'll only take eight turns for a single builder charge on a resource that is more efficient to chop than it is to work. You head over here. We are going to switch. So the, the power of the Aztecs is that they can get their cities built up really quickly using builders. You can see we're building two districts at the same time uh, while we're continuing to build builders. Is it worth it to settle for these pearls? I think it might be. The city won't be very good, but it will give me access to another luxury that I don't already have. I don't have pearls, so that... And as the Aztecs, we do get extra yields for amenities, so I think it'll be worth it to go there and see if we can pick that up. Right. Uh, you... Why don't you head over to the city and maybe plop down another farm in here. He wants to buy this great work off me and we're not going for a tourism game so I don't mind selling this. I don't need the horses. I'd rather get more money. Um, so let's see how much money would you be willing to give me. You'd give me 20 gold per turn which would be 300 plus 20 gold per turn uh, nets about um, 10 times 30 is 300, 600 gold. So if I get 300 gold plus like 9 gold per turn, I think I'm in good shape. It won't give me 10, but he will give me 9. This is a pretty good deal. I don't need, the, I don't need those great works, right? They're not super useful. <clears throat> and I'm going to run out of room for them anyway, so I may as well get extra gold value, which will allow me to purchase, of all things, more tiles in here to chop jungle. And that jungle chopping is really valuable. Because it gives you growth and production the same time. We'll keep building builders. We finished a water mill in here. Um, we're going to put some turns into a monument. We completed a trader over here and we want to have our capital start getting really, really big in population. So we're going to start trading for food. We have a decent food surplus, but this city has a lot of housing room and we want it to get as big as possible. Uh, Right, we will get another trader. You are going to build that. So these are now good food tiles and gold tiles. You're waiting there. And we're going to see if we can't grab that over there. All right, looks like we've explored everything we can explore over here without unlocking the cartography uh, technology, which would take a little bit of time. Although we could research it immediately and it would only take eight turns. So we might grab that after military engineering. And then just bring these guys back to get turned into uh, caravels. And I think that's a pretty reasonable thing because there is a boost here. We could actually delay exploration for a while. Um, and just go straight for Reformed Church. And get the two caravels to boost our culture. Which would be a nice boost. It wouldn't mean we would have the government less long. But it would be just a more efficient way to navigate through the tech and culture tree. We're going to chop out another builder. Swap to the industrial zone. Commercial hub, chop. Keep building builders. 
that you get over there and place down a farm. Really, really strong growth in this city now, which is good because it has lots of room for population, which will allow us to work specialist tiles when we have uh, stuff like libraries. We are going to want to get the library and the university in here, but we're currently building the Colosseum, so that'll take a while. Why don't you grab that? Secrets towards Divine Right. That's actually quite handy because we are working our way down towards there. Okay, we finished another trader in here. We are going to... We're looking for food in the capital because we want to grow this city as fast as possible. Remember, um, the faster we grow, the more of these population we work, the more citizen tiles we can work and all that sort of great stuff, the more districts we can build. Let's have a think about our next move. We could go for... Uh, builders would not be worthless. We could build the Terracotta Army. We could build the Anchor Watt over here and then get a really good theater square later. I think I like that plan. I could also build a Settler in eight turns. I think the Anchor Watt giving me the plus one population and housing in all cities is quite powerful to have extra population and housing. Uh, particularly when we have a relatively small empire like this. We're going to go improve the fish. And we're going to keep buying these nice jungle tiles to chop. We'll finish another builder. And at long last, finish the industrial zone. We'll put another farm here. The city has some good growth. Not very good production, but growth is still valuable. Let's send this builder up to the north. And this guy's just waiting around for his opportunity. I'm going to fortify this guy here just so I have vision of this thing. So that I can keep tabs on it. Okay, there's there's the armory. We do want to prioritize building the armory over the Anchor Watt. We're not really enamored with whether or not we get the Anchor Watt. It's just something to do in this city um, in the meantime. Okay, we do need more money. Let's have a look and see if we can make deals with these guys. Uh, you have all of the luxuries. You would pay me a decent amount for Jade. Probably like 150 gold. Probably closer to like 140. And then let's make another deal. Would you like to buy sugar? for 144 as well. Oh, you slightly lower valued on that one. So more like 125. And just a little bit of clicking around will get you the most efficient deal. And now how would you like to pay for this? Five gold per turn, so that'll be 145-ish. That's not what I meant to do. Not saying this is exactly the price they'll pay, but they'll pay around this much. They probably won't. Yeah, okay, 141. So we just converted all of our spare luxuries into extra gold that we can use to purchase tiles in this city. With which we can continue to generate builders and increase the population of this city. Which is always nice. We're going to put a fishing boat down. And you can see, by chopping this city, even though this was the last city I settled in my empire, it's currently a larger population with more infrastructure than any other city in, the, in my empire, uh, with the exception of these two, simply because there was jungle chops and we placed Magnus here. So that's the power of jungle. That's why you want to always, almost always chop jungle. Although that might change in Gathering Storm. But you can see, this city almost has three districts built and it can build another district. Like, that's crazy. And it, this city was founded like maybe 10, 20 turns ago. Well, I'd say, it, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it's more like 30 to 40 turns ago. But still, like, this is one of the latest settled cities in my empire. And now it's one of the strongest cities in my empire. We're going to keep getting builders because we need to improve this territory. But otherwise, we're doing fine. Um, I could spend my faith on a settler. That would take a while. I'd rather just get builders. 
There is an industrial zone going there. Lighthouse is almost done in here. Let's see, where do I get most value out of my builders? Now we're kind of running out of value, valuable places to use our builders without expending gold on getting tiles. But that's okay. <clears throat> we're still doing great, I think. All right, lighthouse completed over here. Um, we want the aqueduct and the granary. Let's go chop this. We'll put a couple of turns into ancient walls because we have the wall chops available. Did I do a wall chop over here? I actually didn't, which is actually a big mistake. We should do an ancient wall over chop overflow. We'll spend a turn building a farm on this guy. Let's get a nice farm triangle over here to help the city grow and support its population. Uh, right. You don't really have a job to do. I guess I could go slap down some monasteries over here. You were just going to go to sleep there and hopefully I'll remember you. First university is almost done. We're almost finished the Colosseum. Uh, I'm not too worried if I don't get the Colosseum. I more wanted to just make the attempt because we'll get refunded most of the production that we can immediately make use of if we don't get it. A monument has been completed over here and we can build another district. Um, this would definitely be an industrial zone here. The question is where do I place it uh, for the best efficiency? Here's a decent spot. It has two adjacent mine tiles. And, yeah, where's that other builder? So this city needs production and growth, so we will make sure that we get it the things that it needs. We are going to put the production into this, in this city, because we need this to be finished as fast as possible. Actually, well, um, yeah, we need to finish this as fast as possible, actually. All right, we are going to place a farm here. We're going to overflow chop into a great lighthouse. Although we could also get the mausoleum. I think we'll do the great lighthouse. Mm, it's only three gold in the great admiral point. It's not that great. Uh, mausoleum would be very good. If I were to chop here, I would get 124 production multiplied by 2. That would overflow. Which means we could get the mausoleum in... Probably like 10, 12 turns. We would lose that on a farm triangle. But we could build like a snake of farms here. Like so. Which would be almost as good. Not quite as good, but almost as good. This probably would have been a better um, industrial zone, but this was what it was available to me. Do we overflow chop here? That is a question. That is the question. I could also get a campus. Entertainment complex, theater square. I could use campuses, to be honest. So let's equip ancient walls. We will chop the forest out. That will finish that. Overflow that into... Well, we could get the mausoleum in 11 turns. That's really good. Uh, but it isn't, isn't that good. No. We can, we can finish the campus in basically one turn. With clever, uh, clever usage of our stuff. Okay, these guys are in position to become caravels. We're going to overflow chop into a aqueduct. That should almost complete the aqueduct, and we'll just right, we'll just work it naturally. Uh, we are going to build another mine here. You're going to look for an overflow chop of some kind. We're going to overflow a builder into the campus. Then that'll be it in here. 
The city is now extremely well developed after only a few short turns, just doing a few chops. And now we can move Magnus to somewhere else because it's, well, I guess there is one more chop over here that we could take advantage of. And we may as well. Going to get both these guys to go on to alert. Uh, do I want to build a mine or do I want to insert production? I think I'm going to insert. So for the lament for Ying, they would give me 25 gold. And I will take that. Again, we don't need that. We don't need the culture from those, right? We have really strong culture generation anyway. It looks like uh, his city has gone independent, which is great. So it should rebel and join my empire. We have gotten ourselves another great general. We're actually, we actually have a use for these great generals and it's fog busting. We're going to use these great, we we're not going to war. So we may as well use them to expose all this fog over here. So the barbarians can't spawn over there. We have ourselves another um, trade route available. This city can build another uh, thing. I'm thinking of an industrial zone right here. It will take away a good tile from this city, but this is a plus four industrial zone, and then we can build another two districts here. So, slap that in. I could be equipping the card that makes it cheaper to purchase tiles, because I am doing a lot of tile purchasing, but I would much rather have these cards slotted in right now. Now you are going to finish the commercial hub. We will overflow chop one more builder. Awesome, right. How fast could you build a builder? Four turns, nice. The city has amazing production. We'll put one turn into that. You are basically done over here. This city is essentially finished. Um, we don't need to do any more infrastructure there. It did cost us a lot of builders and builder charges, right? But we got ourselves a really, really strong city really, really fast. All right, there is the boost towards gunpowder that we got from building the armory in my capital city. Uh, let's see. We need to get archers. We also need to get trade routes. Uh, I think I'm going to prioritize getting the archers to boost... Uh, machinery here that's essentially getting this boost is worth basically uh 40 percent of 300 is 120 science so building three archers is worth 120 science so building three archers is worth basically three uh two two turns of science to us so we may as well do it uh right we are going to immediately start getting li uh, libraries to increase our scientific income over here, we're going to put a mine on that tile. It's time to move Magnus from this city, and we are going to put him... Mm, probably in here. Ixtapaluka. There's a couple of chops in there. And... That will just about finish that. Hannibal Barker is exploring here. So basically these guys are just positioned to reveal as many tiles as possible so that enemy barbarians cannot spawn. We'll park you there. We will get ourselves another archer. We have another great person that we can claim. It is a admiral and he will give us an envoy. So I'm going to pretty much immediately expend him for that envoy because I don't have a use for great admirals. Let's see. I think I'm happy with the current layout. We don't have industrial zones built yet to take advantage of Buenos Aires and Hong Kong's abilities. So we'll just leave things as they are. May as well insert builders into this district to finish it that little bit quicker. And you're going to build a mine. You're going to go to sleep there. You're going to pop up onto this hill and go to sleep as well. You are waiting to turn into a caravel. We'll need a decent amount of gold, so I shouldn't spend any money for a while because I need to save up for that. And we finished the Colosseum, which will give us plus two culture and loyalty in, I think it was five cities, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So four cities. We get basically 
for building the Colosseum, we get plus eight culture and um, uh, plus eight amenities. So you can see our amenities are super high in all of these cities. Plus three, plus three, plus four. That's giving us a... Um, when you are ecstatic, you get plus 10% yields in all uh, in all areas. Okay, we finished an archer in here. Where do we want the campus? There's probably a really good campus somewhere. As a plus two campus right here, I think that's a pretty reasonably good one. I don't know if I'm going to get much better than that. Um, so we're just going to slap it down there. Want that campus done as fast as possible. We are, however, going to be building another archer so that we can get the boost towards um, machinery. And then we can use the boost uh, we can upgrade to crossbowmen to get the boost towards metal casting. Then we can build a couple of um, catapults and research metal casting so that we can get the boost towards siege tactics. We're still building two universities here. I do need to build a lumber mill. That's, uh, that's going to be after I research machinery. But I think we're on, we're on track. I'm not going to be able to get the killer unit with the um, muskman or the killer unit with a knight. But we can get a few of these other ones in here. Okay, the Colosseum has been completed. Uh, we definitely want to get the Industrial Zone. I also want to get the University in here. I'm going to place the Industry Zone. Industry Zone. That's a plus five Industrial Zone, which is really, really powerful. You, maybe I should have built that in the capital. Oh, well. Would have been really good to have that in the capital now that I'm thinking about it. But uh, I've already made the decision, so we can't change our mind. This city can actually build another district, weirdly enough. Um, which district would we like to build in here? I think we're going to leave that decision a little bit later in, later in the game, and we're going to get started on a library. We are going to faith purchase a builder that we can start using to insert production into the um, industrial zone while we're building the scientific buildings. University has been completed over here. Let's get started on our industrial zone. Um, but we're going to build a monument and use this guy to insert production into it because this is worth a lot of production. We'll build a monument. As for this one, insert. And you can see our uh, Eagle Warriors are actually pretty close in power to these guys. So we may as well make him go out and meet him. Uh, we're immediately going to start building a workshop. You guys are waiting one more turn to become caravels because we want to use caravels to explore because they have a higher movement speed than galleys. Okay, we have just unlocked guilds, Chichen Itza. I don't think the the reason I don't think Chichen Itza is worth building is because it's too valuable to chop um, rainforest with Magnus, and hopefully, hopefully, chopping rainforests with Magnus is has been demonstrated by this city over here which basically went from population 1 to like population 11 in a very, very short span of time. We're going to see if we can get a friendship with Norway, and that's fine. Right, we should have three archers soon, so we're going to get to work on machinery. One more turn on that archer. Um... Okay, it's almost about the time in the game where Magnus is not going to be jumping around as much. So I think it might be worth it to set him as a uh, as surplus logistics. And then maybe park him in the capital to get extra growth. The capital is generating a lot of uh, culture and science, but we could move him over to another city that's generating culture and science. Like, this one is generating a decent amount. Uh, this one's generating a decent amount. I think I think we'll probably move him over here. Uh, so let's do that later. Later on. It, it, this is later on um, things I'm talking about, not right now things. We get the double insert because those builders were out of charges. Interesting. And now we can upgrade our caravels. We can upgrade one. I would like to slot in the card 
that makes it 50% cheaper on unit upgrades because this is going to save me a lot more money than a single turn worth of upkeep. You'd see now we can upgrade them for half price. It's really valuable. That gave us the boost for exploration, so we can finish that in a single turn. And now, by finishing exploration, that's going to have a government with six policy types, which will get us the boost towards castles, and so on and so forth. So you can see how the plan kind of comes together. How you navigate your way through the tech tree should be based on Eureka's, what your plans are, and the most efficient sort of production you can spend. All right, industrial zone, chop, library. Okay, I wasn't expecting him to die there. Oh well, not a big deal. I thought he had the combat strength to survive, but I guess I was wrong. Uh, Merchant Republic. It, it told me that, that he was winning, but I guess he was just taking more damage than I had planned for. We're going to switch over to Merchant Republic. This is going to give us access to one less military policy card, but two more... Um, uh, sorry, one more economic policy card, one more diplomatic policy card, and one more um, wild card. Uh, I'm going to use Merchant Confederation just to get the extra gold here. It's quite nice to get a little bonus to gold. Uh, right, so I don't need to upgrade units right now. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put in the 100% production. Gold maintenance wouldn't be bad. So let's talk a little bit about once you... Um, generally speaking, you don't want to take these great people cards unless you know for a fact that there's a particular great person that you want to get and that these cards will actually help you get them. Too often I see players insert these cards without any chance of ever getting the great people that are related to them or when the great person is already guaranteed. Um, so just think carefully about this, about the situation and the opportunity cost of inserting these cards. Uh, Craftsman is actually pretty powerful because we are starting to finish industrial zones. So this would give us production in a decent amount of cities, uh, and that's quite valuable. Let's see. Extra gold could be really, really powerful. Extra gold from trade routes could also be really, really powerful. I think I would get more from this than I would anything else. So we're going to insert extra gold in production and extra science and extra build charges with a... So basically, we're trying to get as many yields as possible that we can actually use... You can see our gold has jumped up and the production level of our empire should have jumped up as well. We get some error score from changing our government. We also now uh, can make our way to Reformed Church so that we can get started on St. Basil's Cathedral. Can I get an alliance? We are going to get a research alliance. Let's see if he'll pay me gold. He will pay me gold. That's good. Excellent. I should have actually bought... I should have... Uh, got an open borders off him first because he will pay me for open borders and an alliance um, in the capital. I would like to build the campus. What I'll probably end up doing is purchasing a builder, moving him onto the campus, shopping into the campus, and then instead putting production into an intelligence agency. The intelligence agency is the sort of Oh God, I don't really have, I don't really know what tier two government building I should get. Just get the intelligence agency. It gives you access to an extra spy and it makes your spy operations have a higher chance of success. Spies are very useful, particularly on higher difficulty levels where you can steal more and more gold from the AI. Uh, Grandmaster's Chapel can be good if you're going for some sort of war game. Uh, it allows you to convert your fate into a sort of war religion game. Sorry, it allows you to convert your fate into units quite quite handy um it also allows you uh to pillage for faith as well that can they kind of work together to sustain your army on the offensive uh foreign ministry i think is pretty much worthless in 99 percent of the games it might be good for hungary in the upcoming civilization 6 gathering storm expansion but generally speaking i think intelligence agency if you don't know what to pick and grand master's chapel if you're going for some sort of offensive um game domination but we are going for a scientific victory which I think the Aztecs are the best at out of all the civilization, out of all the victory types, the Aztecs are, in my mind, a uh, scientific victory civilization because I believe that the extra combat strength from amenities acts more like a defensive bonus and a SimCity bonus than it does anything else. Right. You be aggressive in the early game and then you build for the late game. Right, we have finished an aqueduct in this city. The city has plenty of room to grow. I'm going to... 
put a little bit of time into a granary to continue to grow this city. This city is going to need some builder attention in a little while, but for now it's doing just fine. We're going to continue to insert production into these districts. You need to be guarded because that guy might come across and capture you. Uh, and now I can start exploring the wider world with my caravels. Which was the plan all along. Two of these archers are going to want to be upgraded into crossbowmen at machinery. So I'll need to remember that. Uh, when I get there, I need to insert the card that gives me a 50% discount on upgrading units. I will take an embassy from you. That's great. Uh, I might get an alliance with Harold Hardrada as well. Uh, let's see. Looks like he doesn't want to get an alliance. Maybe he hasn't unlocked the civic that gives him access to that. Uh, so if we check the scientific map mode you can see he's three technologies ahead but he's earning double our science that's pretty normal but currently we are of the people that we know making the most science our uh, uh, culture and tourism and culture and the fact that we're not generating much science per turn relative to the enemy is fine because remember we're using all of our production to make sure that we're getting a lot of these tech boosts i am going to need three workshops at some point but i also need to get the university and this is probably the best city that I have to get a university in a reasonable amount of time. I'm going to turn this into a swordsman. I'm going to finish this district and then immediately start a workshop because I need three of those to get the boost towards um, industrialization. I'm going to send this builder over here chop into the industrial zone continue to build a library uh, switch over to the campus to finish it a little bit quicker while we're building something more important now I need this guy to embark because he is the unit that can actually pick up um, tribal villages and there might be still some tribal villages out there all right, let's take this guy out. We'll move you here. That'll shave that. That'll finish that district. And we can immediately start building a workshop. So that's two of the three workshops that I need to build underway. And you've built all your districts. I can build another district in here. I still don't know what to do in here with this district. I could get a holy site. I don't know if it would be worth it. I could purchase a tundra tile and just slap something down. Like a... Could use a trade route in here. Just slap it on the tundra tile. Chop into it. Continue to build a library. Chop into the campus. Continue to build the intelligence agency. And the reason we're, we're just doing a lot of micromanagement of our production, because... It allows us to, to efficiently build things. It's hard to explain it exactly, but I, I, I want to build this right now, right? But I can't use builders to insert production into this particular thing. So I switch to the campus, I insert the production, and then I switch back to the thing that I actually want to build. Same thing over here. I have a builder in position that can chop into the industrial zone. So I insert production into it. But what I actually want to be building is the library and university. This, this way, it just allows me to make use of my bonuses. It, it, it's, it's fairly straightforward, really. I, I mean, I don't know how, how to explain it more effectively. Basically, there's a thing that I really, really want to be doing, and there's a thing that I should be taking advantage of. And by switching my production, I get to do both. All right, let's kill here. Um, actually, Korea is in this game, which is worrisome because they're a really good scientific civilization. Uh, let's make a deal. Let's do open borders. She wants me to pay her. I'll always be happy to pay at least one gold per turn to get open borders. Uh, how would you like to buy my luxuries? You would not pay a very good price for those because you don't like me very much yet. So we're going to let our relationship increase uh, next turn. There's Korea up here. She wants to make a deal. Three luxuries for one luxuries and some gold. I'd rather just pay the 100 gold that she'll ask. So the AI will demand nine gold per turn, right? Nine gold per turn is about 300 gold. But what she'll actually take is probably somewhere closer to like 170 gold. The AI... Uh, asks for a lot more gold per turn than you actually have to give them. 
So 170 was about right. That should be six. One, one six, eight. So 169. So I predicted that pretty closely. It's usually when you're trying to get money from the AI, it's like the amount of gold per turn total. So if it's like 10 gold per turn, it would be 300 gold multiplied by about 0.8. When it's them asking for the gold, it's about uh, the gold multiplied by 0.6. So you, you, you cut it almost in half and that's what they'll accept. So that will cost me more gold right now, but less gold later on. So fun loving. Gilgamesh likes me because I'm keeping my people happy. We are... Okay, there's Divine Right, so we are going to upgrade these two. Oh, I have to lock in my government before it's cheaper. Uh, let's take this out. Discount from upgrades. I don't need to change any of these cards. I'm happy with the way things are. We are immediately going to upgrade two of these archers. I need a very small amount of gold. You'll still pay me the same amount. I'll take the hundred and like twenty gold that you'll you'll pay me. Probably more like a bit less, but it's always best to overshoot and then sort of build down to what they will pay. So one hundred and six gold for that, and we're just take we're taking not so great deals just because we need the gold right now to upgrade. So upgrading those two crossbowmen gave us access to the metal casting technology, which will allow us to build, um, which will allow us to get the siege tactics uh, grant once we build two bombards. And we will be doing that by building two catapults and upgrading them because it's the most production efficient to build previous units and then upgrade into them. Uh, military tactics, you can pretty much not get this the entire game and be perfectly fine. Our next move is we need to build a lumber mill to get mass production. I'm not sure where I'm going to build that lumber mill, but we will build a lumber mill. In fact, I'm just going to slap it down here purely for the Eureka boost. That will give me more options with how I want to approach the tech tree. Um, I'm going to grab banking because we need to build two banks to uh, get the boost for economics. So that's a, that's a good move there. Right. Industrial zone chop university go we want more universities for the science and i think now we're in a pretty good spot to uh, call this an end to this episode we've made some really really good progress we are currently on par with korea still slightly behind gilgamesh but remember we're using lots of eurekas to stay on par with the ai and that's a really important thing to do especially as you start to go to higher technology at uh, higher difficulty levels is to make sure you're taking advantage of eurekas as much as possible uh, one problem that we have this game is that we did not find any scientific city-states, which is hampering our ability to do a scientific victory. Uh, if you do manage to find a scientific city-state, it can significantly increase the rate at which you can win one of these games. I'm going to attack here, because I have a slight advantage uh, in combat strength, which should, if they attack the quadrium, that should translate into a total advantage. And uh, yeah, there you go. Right, I'm going to call that the end of this episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I am speeding up and talking less in depth, and I'm still, I'm just kind of generally explaining the reasons and stuff. But if I did something in this game, in this episode, that you didn't understand, please do just leave a comment, and I will make sure that I explain it in detail to you as best as I can. Any questions or comments are welcome. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, I want to say I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time.